welcome to a new episode of Beyond the Routine. I am whew, really excited today. Um, by the way, those who don't know me, I am a mining geek. So I get super excited when I'm told that I'm going to be doing reviews on six of the best video cards on the market for mining. Um, well, I don't actually, I don't know whether they're the best video cards for mining, but they are the best AMD RX 580 series video cards that each of the six manufacturers claim. So, um, I've been asked to do a seven part series and today is the first part one of the seven part series. And we're going to kick it off with the, this MSI Gaming X Plus. And it's going up against five other very special video cards. Why are they special? Because they are the best that the manufacturers claim that they currently make as far as the RX 580 goes. So this baby, which is uh, set to clock at 1441 megahertz, is going up against the XFX GTRS that comes in at 1450 megahertz. And then that's going up against the Power Color Red Devil Golden Sample Edition. Just listen to that name. How special is that card? Um, that one's clock at 1425 megahertz. And then the Sapphire Nitro, the infamous Sapphire Nitro Plus Limited Edition it is so limited. You can hardly find one in the market or anywhere to buy, let alone uh, test out. Um, but we got one. And then the ASUS T8G Gaming Top Overclock Edition. Um, these three fan baby, they are super quiet and super cool. And then finally, we're going to close it off with the Gigabyte Aorus XTR. And that one comes in at the 1439 megahertz. Oh, by the way, the ASUS is at 13, uh, 1431 megahertz. And then the Gigabyte Aorus XTR at 1439. So a range between 1425 megahertz to 1450 megahertz. That's some speed. That's some horsepower under the hood of these GPUs. Now, why are they so special? It's because these are the top bin GPU that these manufacturers can get their hands on. And they have been specially tested, specially tuned at the factory level. So to be the king of all of their current video cards as far as AMD goes. Um, um, now, a lot of people, a lot of reviewers on YouTube especially have done reviews on these six cards um, and they test and put them up against each other to test how fast they game, how many frames you get and how hot they get and how loud they get uh, when you push them to the limit. And that's all fine and dandy, but I'm the mining geek. So I want to know which car mines the fastest, which car is going to give me the most hash rate. Um, and so we come up with the metrics and we're going to score them and see who will end up being the king of kings. So um, stay tuned for the six cards and the final. Now the final seventh part of the series is extra special because we're going to put, be putting them all together, these six cards, and building a mining rig, a true Frankenstein mining rig. And then we're going to show you just how fast you can get when all of these six cards work in one rig and mine your favorite cryptocurrency. The MSI Gaming X Plus comes standard base clock at 1411 megahertz with two tiers of overclocking at 1431 and 1441 megahertz. The RAM is base clock at 8000 megahertz or 2000 megahertz, however you want to say it. Um, and with an overclock of 8100 megahertz or 2025 megahertz. Of course, we're going to be pushing this to its limit um, to see how fast you, it can mine comes with two 8-pin power, so which is the, the one that requires the most power out of the six cards that we're comparing. 
It's sized at 10.98 inches by 5.51 inches, so they are pretty tall. If you expect to put these in your case, you want to make sure that you have enough clearance so the side of your case is not going to bump into it. It's going to stick out a bit. Um, it is categorized as a 2.5 slot video card instead of the 2 slot video card. So you want to make sure also that you have room between your cards if you plan on doing crossfire with these. Or if you're mining with six of these, you want to make sure that you give ample room for it to breathe. Inside the box, you'll find your regular user manual with a CD for the drivers and utilities. You have the registration card. And because it is a 2 times 8 pin power video card, MSI was nice enough to include one of these adapters, which turns a 6 pin into an 8 pin. If you're just looking at it, it doesn't look that big compared to, uh, let's say, an MSI Gaming RX 480 card. In fact, it looks almost the same. But it is one extremely heavy card and it is a lot thicker, a lot wider. As far as the ports goes, it comes with one DVI, two display ports, and two HDMI 2.0B ports, which is very nice for people who likes to do VR and wants to hook up the VR goggle plus another monitor. On the side, you can see the profile and just how thick the heatsink is. And here are the two 8-pin powered input that we mentioned. Overall, this is a very well made video card and it's what we expect from a reputable manufacturer like MSI. Now on to the test. Alright, if you like the video so far, go and click that like button. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, uh, please do. That's how you motivate us to create more and better content for you. Uh, moving on, we're testing the MSI Radeon RX 580 Gaming X Plus 8GB Edition. It is the fastest RX 580 that MSI currently manufacture. It is a very pretty card. We will see how well it does. Right off the bat, the three softwares that we mainly use to monitor everything is the HWinfo and the TechPower GPU-Z, along with the MSI Afterburner. And uh, the mining software that we use is the Claymore 9.3 dual miner, uh, but we're just going to be mining, uh, testing the hash rate on Ethereum only mining. Off the bat, you will see that uh, one good thing and one bad thing. Good thing is the memory is Samsung as confirmed by the HW Info, as well as the GPU Z. But, however, the ASIC quality right here, that is some low ASIC quality, 17.3. Maybe we got unlucky on this car. We'll see uh, with the test results, uh, hash rate, if that indeed affects the ultimate performance of this video card. Okay, moving on. The fan is actually not even on right now on the video card while it's mining. It's because it's only reaching 60 degrees Celsius, approximately. That is impressive. Very good cooling on this video card. So I have a feeling that we'll be able to push this card really hard. You see that it is consuming about 122 watt at the GPU chip power level. GPU core power level is consuming about 87, 88 watt. Um, it is pretty high, but after all, the core clock right now is set at the default 1431 megahertz with the 2000 megahertz for the mem memory per channel. And we are looking at somewhere between 24.5 to 24.7 mega hashes per second. This is the stock unchange settings and with its original BIOS. Um, 
The reason why we use HW info also, well, another reason why I use it is to see help us see if GPU memory errors occur when we overclock the memory, which we will be overclocking this memory a whole lot. See how far this car can take and how much hash rate it will produce. We'll be right back after a short break where we're going to flash the BIOS and relaunch everything. So stay tuned. All right, here we go. So we've uh, flashed the BIOS uh, by copying the timing of 1750 to the 2000. And that's all we did with the BIOS. And now we are looking at uh, about 20A mega hashes as the top hash rate versus 24.6 that we were getting before. Uh, it did raise the uh, power consumption by about 10 watt on the chip power but uh, and uh, temperature is slightly higher than before as well um, but we are getting you know almost four more mega hashes three and a half mega hashes more just by flashing the bios so it's looking promising let's make some adjustments and uh, we will see uh, how far this car can go after some fine-tuning and adjustments, as you can see over at this MSI Afterburner window, that uh, we have undervolted by negative 96 millivolt, so it's now working at 1025 millivolt or 1.025 volt, uh, which has brought the power consumption down from about 140 watt to 115 watt. So, which is pretty good. That's a you know, 25 watt decrease. And we've also adjusted the core clock and the memory clock uh, to a point where it is stable right now. It is the highest we can go. We've tried bumping up the memory clock to uh, 2200, but that creates a lot of memory errors. And the core clock, when it goes above 1400, uh, it creates system crashes. So right now at a stable level, we can call this card a 30 mega hash per second card. As you can see from the Claymore over here, on average 30 mega hashes per second. So it's official with these settings. The MSI, king of the RX 580 series that they currently manufacture, the Gaming X Plus 8GB is a 30 mega hash per second card. Let's hope that its competitors are uh, going to be able to get to that level, um, if not higher. Uh, if I were the, this card, I would be, uh, I would not be sleeping well right now because uh, we're hoping that the other cards can get at least to 31 mega hashes per second. We shall see. We were glad to see that the MSI Radeon RX 580 Gaming Plus X Plus did not shy away from the challenge to see who will be crowned the King of Kings in the AMD Radeon RX 580 series. Um, it came to us at 30 mega hashes per second. That is pretty good. Uh, let's remind everybody that this card will be going up against the XFX GTRS edition and the Power Color Red Devil Golden Sample edition, as well as the Sapphire Nitro Plus Limited edition, the ASUS Top Overclock edition, and the Gigabyte Orist XTR edition. Thank you for watching and uh, please subscribe to our channel, click the like button and hope to see you in the next episode of a seven part series where we crown the king of kings in the RX 580 GPU. Have a great day.